Hello students, this is Mrs. Yowd, and today we're going to do Chapter 6, Lesson 2, which is about radicals and rational exponents. Please have your journals open to page 175. So it turns out that you can extend the concept of a square root to other types of roots. So we're used to seeing, for example, the square root of 16 equals 4 because 4 squared equals 16. Now, there's an invisible 2 here, which means that you're, divide, you're multiplying a number twice, in this case 4 times 4, in order to get 16. But usually you don't see the 2 for a square root. But there are other kinds of roots as well. For example, if we were thinking about the third root of 8, what we're trying to do is find out what number multiplied by itself 3 times gives us 8. So 8 divides into 4 times 2, and then 4 divides into 2 times 2. So since there are three 2's here, and we have an index of 3, the third root of 8 equals 2. And the reason why is because 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. And we can extend that even further. We could say that the fourth root of 81 is 3. And the reason why is because 81 is 9 times 9, and then 9 is 3 times 3, and this 9 is also 3 times 3. So this time we have four 3s, and we have an index of 4. So the fourth root of 81 is 3, and the reason why is because 3 to the power of 4 equals 81. So in this here, we've, I talked about them already. So if you have a square of a root, this that's called the radical. Okay, the index of the radical is the number that goes here. Whether that be if it, if there is no index there, you can assume that it is a two, just like the square root of 16 up here. But sometimes there is an index that's other than two, like three and four, and basically it tells you. What is a number, or ask you, what is a number that you can multiply by itself this many times in order to get the number that's inside here? Incidentally, it doesn't really make sense to have an index of 1, because what is a number that multiplies by itself only once to get a 7 would be obviously just 7. So we, don't ever, we won't ever see an index of 1, because that just really doesn't make sense. OK, let's take a look at some of the rules for these radicals. Please pause the video for a minute and go ahead and read through these rules here. The things that you want to watch out for are things like this. If you have the square root of a negative 4, well, the square root of positive 4 is 2, right? Because 2 times 2 is 4. But what multiplies by itself twice to give you a negative 4? And if you tried to put this in your calculator, you would get an error symbol because there is no number that multiplies by itself twice to get you a negative number. Incidentally, when you get into uh, Algebra 2, you'll learn about this. The square root of a negative number is actually called the lowercase letter i. And this, le this actually means imaginary. So that means we could, in fact, find the square root of negative 4, because that's going to be the same as the square root of negative 1 multiplied by the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. So then this answer would be 2 multiplied by i, which is the imaginary number. I know that this sounds kind of weird, and we will not be using this in uh, in Algebra 1. This will, You can save that for Algebra 2. But just know that that is coming. For our case, we're just going to say that there is no solution for a negative uh, in a root. However, if you have a an odd number in the root, so for example, the third root of negative 27. So the third root of negative 27, if you think about it, if we what times what times what gives you negative 27? Well, you could say that negative 3 times negative 3 gives you positive 9, but then positive 9 multiplied by another negative 3 does give us a negative number. So in this case, there is a solution, and that solution is negative 3. So if you have uh, basically, if you have an even index with a negative number on the inside, it's going to be no real solution. But if you have an odd number index, uh, 
with a negative number, then you will have a solution and that solution will be negative. Now, once in a while, you're, um, you're gonna run across a fractional exponent. And so what this fractional exponent does is it changes it into um, a radical. So what happens, and I'll just do this example here, let's say you had the 27 to the power of 2 thirds. Well, that's the same as 27 multiplied, or to the power of 1 third, and then all to the power of 2. Now, whenever you see um, a 1 third, what happens here is this will turn into a radical. Okay, so it's going to be uh, the third root of 27 squared. And so the third root of 27 is 3, right? Because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So what this turns into is 3 squared, and then the final answer then would be 9. So that means that the 27 to the power of 2 thirds equals 9. All right, let's look at some examples. It says in exercises one through six, find the indicated real nth root of a. So what they're asking us to do is to take this information, I'm gonna do number four with you. They want us to find the fifth root of 243. So I'm gonna write it this way, the fifth root of 243. So we need to find a number that multiplies by itself, this time five times, in order to get us 243. So this takes a little bit of practice. Um, you need to think of what is a number that multiplies into 243? Well, it's not even, it's not multiplier of five. Three might work, and indeed it does. Three times 81 equals 243. Now 81 we know is nine times nine, and then this nine is three times three, and this nine is also three times three. So what we're trying to do is find a grouping of five of something. So I have one, two, three, four, five threes here. So that means that three multiplied by three, multiplied by three, multiplied by three, multiplied by three gives us 243. So that's three, five times. So that means my answer, the fifth root of 243 is three. And you'll get better at breaking it apart as time goes on. So let's do the uh, number five, the eighth root of 256. So 256 is gonna break down uh, by two because it's an even number, so that's 128. And then we have two times 64. Ah, there's something that I recognize. This is eight times eight. And then eight is three twos, and this eight is also three twos. So let's see how many we have here. We need eight of them. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. There's all eight right there. So that means that my answer is two. All right, let's take a look at number six. The fourth root of 10,000. Well, that sounds like it's probably gonna be a 10 to me. So, but let's find out for sure. I'm gonna do 100 times 100, because that gives us four zeros, and that's what we have up here. And then this is gonna be 10 times 10, and this is also 10 times 10. So I see that I have four tens here, and that's how many I need. So my answer is 10. I would like for you to do numbers one, two, and three on your own. For number one, I got eight. Number two is three, and number three is four. Please pause the video and check your answers. And if you made any mistakes, see if you can find them. In exercises seven through 12, we need to, need to evaluate the expression. I'm gonna start with number eight. So we have the third root of negative 512. Since it's an odd root and there's a negative in here, I know that my answer is negative. Remember, it's allowed to have a negative inside the radical if the index is odd. So let's see if we can figure out what this is going to be. So 512 is eight times 64, and then 64 is eight times eight. So we have three eights here, and eight times eight times eight is 512. That means the third root of five, negative 512 is negative eight. Now, sometimes you don't get as easy of, of a way of answering it as what I did here. So I'm gonna just show you a different way of doing this. 
Uh, if I don't know that 8 times 64 is 512, I know that it's even. So I'm going to go ahead and take out a 2. So that gives me 256. So now I'm going to take out another 2. So divide by 2, and I get 128. And now I'm going to divide out a 2 again, and that gives me 64. As soon as I get down to something that I'm comfortable with, like I know that 64 is 8 times 8. So I'm going to do 8 times 8, and then I can take these and divide them into 2s and take these and divide them into twos. So remember that we wanted three of these, right? We want it in groups of three. So I notice that I have one group of three twos here, another group of three twos here, and another group of three twos here. So that means that what we're going to do is we're going to take out one from each of those groups. So we're gonna take out one of these twos one of these twos, and one of these twos. So our final answer is going to be 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2, which is 8. So that's another way to solve these kind of problems. If you, don't, if you can't find the answer as easily as what I've been doing, you can always break it down into its smallest parts, and that might be helpful for you. So let's take a look at number 11, since I've already kind of written in that one. So number 11 is 729 to the 1 sixth. So that's the same as the sixth root of 729. And that's not something I'm really familiar with. 729 is kind of a big number. So I'm just going to use my calculator to help me out. I'm going to try dividing by 3, and that does indeed work. So 3 comes out, and we have 243. I'm going to try 3 again and I get 81. Aha, I recognize 81. 81 is 9 times 9, and then we can break that down into 3s. Okay, and so now I'm going to look back up and see what my index is again. My index is 6, so that means I need 6 of them. So there's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We've got all 6 there, so that means that we know that our answer is going to be 3 for number 11. Let's take a look at number 12. So number 12 is negative 81 to the 1 half. Since the, neg the negative is part of the parentheses, that means that it is inside the root. So that is going to be the square root of negative 81. Now remember, if we have an index that's even and there's a negative in the inside, there is not going to be an answer. So this is no solution. Incidentally, if the parentheses were not here, so if we had negative 81 without the parentheses to the 1 half, then the negative would not be part of the exponent. So this would be negative the square root of 81, which does have an answer that would be negative 9. So those parentheses really do make a difference. Uh, I would like for you to do number 7, 9, and 10 on your own. For number 7, I got 5, number 9 is negative 6, and number 10 is negative 3. For the next three problems, we just need to rewrite it in exponent form. So right now it's written in rational form, or radical form, excuse me, it's written in radical form, and we need to change it to exponent form. So remember that when you write it as an exponent, 4 and then the number on the outside of the parentheses is the top, is the numerator, and the number inside, or the, the index, is the denominator. So this is all they're asking for us to do on this. We don't have to do anything more. Okay, I'll do one more. Number 14 has a negative 8, so we do have to put the negative in the parentheses. That's very important. The 2 is my numerator and the 3 is my denominator, so that's my answer there. For number 16, we're going to switch it around. This time we're going opposite. Uh, this is written in exponent form, and we need to change it to radical form. So the 2 is on the outside, so this is going to be this, the root of negative 3, and it's going to be the fifth root, because that's the one on the bottom, and then it's all to the power of 2. Uh, I'll go ahead and do number 17 as well. This is going to be the square root of 6 all to the power of 3. And by the way, you don't really need to, if any time something is a square root, you don't really need to write that. We could erase that if we wanted to, and it would 
mean the same thing. So anytime you have something as a square root, you don't need to put the index there. I would like for you to do numbers 15 and 18 on your own. For number 15, I got 15 to the 7 fourths. And number 18 is the fourth root of 12 all to the power of 3. For the next set of problems, we need to evaluate the expression. Let's take a look at number 23. For number 23, I notice that the, that the negative is not going to be part of the exponent because it doesn't have parentheses. So that means I'm going to put a negative here, and then I'm going to put my parentheses. So this is going to be the sixth root of 729 all to the power of 5. Now, we've done the sixth root of 729 before in number 11, if you remember. So if you look back at number 11, the sixth root of 729 was 3. So that means it's going to be negative, and then we have 3 to the power of 5, because this is the power of 5 here. So I just need to multiply 5 together, so this or 3 together 5 times. So we have, I'm just going to write them out like this. Sometimes it's useful to do that because I know that this is going to be 9, and this is also 9, so 9 times 9 is 81. So I still have another 3 here, and 81 multiplied by 3 is 243. So that means that my final answer is going to be negative 243. The reason why it's negative is because there's still this negative here out front. Let's take a look at number 24. So number 24 is the fourth root. This time the negative is part of the parenthesis, is part of the exponent because it's inside the parentheses. So the fourth root of negative 625 all to the power of 3. Now since we have an even number index with a negative number inside the radical, we know that this answer is going to be no solution. All right, I'm going to do one more with you, number 21. So we have the third root of 343 all squared. So I'm not sure what number divides into 343. I'm going to try 3. Uh, that gave me 114 and a third. That's not going to work. So let's erase that. And I know that it's not even. It doesn't it has a 5. I need to think of another number. How about 7? Um, so 343 divided by 7. Ah, that equals 49. Oh, good. So I know what 49 is, that's 7 times 7. So we have an index of 3, and we do indeed have three sevens here. So that means it's going to be 7, and don't forget you still have a square there. So 7 squared is 49, so that's going to be my answer. I would like for you to do 19, 20, and 22 on your own. For number 19, I got 4. Number 20 is no solution. And number 22 is 128. Number 25, the radius r of a sphere is given by this equation, where a is the surface area of the sphere. We're told that the surface area of the sphere is 1,493 square meters. And uh, we want to find the radius to the nearest tenth. And they want us to use 3.14 for pi. So basically, all we need to do is substitute in this number for a. So r is going to equal 1,493 divided by 4 multiplied by pi all to the 1 half. So that's the same as the square root of 1,493 all divided by 4 pi. So if you use your calculators on that, they want us to uh, round to the nearest tenth of a meter. So if we do that, our answer will be 10.9 meters. Uh, you definitely need to use a calculator to help you out on this one. Okay, that's all. Thanks for watching.